Could you help me get out of here, bud? Nick, what's not for Yes. Yes. Any, yeah, I don't know what room number this is. Um, so no homework questions? Okay. Well, let's talk about uh, 3D rigid body kinetics. Well, we're not going to do tests on it or anything. Yeah. Seminar mode. In the, no, I will not. Um, so here's the motivation for this whole new approach. And it's, you know, there aren't too many things that really tra change drastically when you go from 2D to 3D, but this does. Um, and so here's why that happens. I, I think I mentioned this once before in passing, but um, in 2D, 2D. As an object changes orientation, so let's say you have an object that's rotating this way, so this is instant one, and this is instant two. Um, the only non-zero moment of inertia, uh, let me choose a coordinate system. So this is an inertial coordinate system. Uh, the only non-zero moment of inertia Uh, and let's say that comes into the problem is about what axis? Yep, is about the z-axis. Comma, and. That doesn't change from instant one to instant two as this thing changes orientation. In the case that I drew, if you treat that like a slender rod in the first position, it's 1 12th times the mass times the length squared. Same thing in the second position. OK, so that's easy. Um, but in 3D, um, say that we start out with the object in this position. I'll use the same coordinate system where the z-axis is coming out towards us. Um, in the second instant, we could be just like looking you know what I mean? Like if it's yeah. Um, so it comes from here, it swings around this way. Um, in 3D, moments of inertia matter about all the axes, and we'll talk about how that comes up. Um, but the moment of inertia. Mm 
matters about every axis. It, well, uh, in Y is going to be the one that's non-zero, and it's good, and you're right. In the way I drew it, um, the the moment of inertia about Y is the same here as it is here. That's that's you're exactly right. Um, but since since we're not able to assume in three D that this is moving in a plane, I mean, I drew a motion in the plane, but you know, it could have acceleration now in a different plane or whatever. Um, Look at what happens to the moments of inertia about, so the way I drew it here and there, the moments of inertia about Y are the same, but look at the ones about X and about Z, okay? So think of a rotation about X in this case. Well, if this is a slender rod, uh, what's the moment of inertia of this about X at instant one? Zero, yep. And uh, here, what's the moment of inertia about X? Not zero, one twelfth ml squared. And then about the z-axis, this is this one is one twelfth, blah, blah, blah. This one is zero. Okay. So the way I drew it, um, and in general, These moments of inertia change over time. Um, so in the example above, you know, look at um, I sub X and I sub Z. Um, so because of that, uh, you know, we don't we don't have a way to think about the time derivatives of uh, of a moment of inertia tensor. Um, Uh, well, how do I want to do this? Um, so anyways, the bottom line here is uh, we're going to do these calculations in a rotating coordinate system. We'll use rotation, rotational Newton's second law in a coordinate system uh, where the moments of inertia are constant in time. And that's a rotating coordinate system. And we've already seen, you know, how complicated things get when you deal with a rotating coordinate system. And so now that stuff's going to come up in this. But we don't really have any other choice because otherwise we'd be dealing with time varying moments of inertia and we don't know how to deal with that. Um, and so the way we're going to do this is... Uh, We'll think of rotational Newton's second law as saying that the sum of the moments is equal to the time derivative of the angular velocity, that h is angular velocity.
that's the angular velocity about the point A. where A is either fixed in an inertial coordinate system or the center of mass. And since we'll be in a rotating coordinate system, A rotational Newton second law. Well, how do you take time derivatives in a rotating coordinate system? Um, it's going to say that the sum of all the moments about that point A is equal to the time derivatives of the components of the angular momentum. plus the angular velocity of the coordinate system crossed with the angular momentum. And these are all about A. Where A is either fixed in an inertial coordinate system or the center of mass. Um, and this is just using the um, you know, when we first started dealing with rotating coordinate systems, we derived this expression. We did it in 2D. Um, but this relationship between time derivatives in the rotating coordinate system of any vector you choose and, you know, the it was equal to the observed time derivative plus omega across the original vector. Okay, so now we need to define the angular momentum um, and the first thing we have to do is define this new sort of physical object called a mass moment of inertia matrix. Uh, so I'll call this a mathematical preliminary the mass moment of inertia matrix about a point and this is actually a tensor for the people who are in D form so it follows the rules of tensors you can use rotation matrices with it um, And there are integral definitions for all of the elements. Uh, so, but then I'll give you easier ways to do the calculations, but this is just sort of the definition. Um, so this is a three by three matrix. And we're gonna call these elements IX, the diagonal, IY, IZ. And now we have to fill in the off-diagonal elements. Um, so this is negative 
i x y negative i x z and then it's a symmetric tensor so negative i x y uh, this is negative i y z negative i x z negative i y z And the definitions of these um, are uh, ix is equal to the integral of the quantity y squared plus z squared dm. iy is the integral of the quantity x squared plus z squared dm. iz is the integral of the quantity x squared plus y squared dm. That's an uh, uh, increment of mass, an uh, infinitesimal amount of mass. And this is actually like just Plane by plane, this is the definition of the moment of inertia that we used before. It's just now we have all of them together. Uh, these are called the moments of inertia. And so those are all familiar, but now we have the weird ones. Um, Ixy is equal to the integral of xy dm. Ixd is the integral um, of x times z dm. And Iyz is equal to the integral y times z dm. And these are called the products of inertia. Um. Yeah, this gets a little tedious. What? This is easy. <laughs> um, now we want to fill out that whole matrix, but we don't want to calculate doing this way. But there's something that makes it a lot easier to do, and that is that. Okay, so here's the good news. Every object has principal axes, or all right, let me let's say for every object, there are or there is a principal coordinate system. in which, yeah, it's pretty related to that. Um, there's a principal coordinate system in which the moment of inertia matrix is just Ix, Iy, Iz, and zeros everywhere else. Um, and so, if you can identify the um, principal coordinate system, then uh, you can just use the you know formulas that people have derived for that object. And so that's like okay, well there is, but then 
what do we do if we want to do our problem in a coordinate system that is not the principal coordinate system? Well, what would you, the people who are in D form, what would you imagine that you do? Yeah, so you get these numbers in the principal coordinate system and then you use a rotation matrix. Um, so to re-express um, I sub A in another coordinate system, um, you find the rotation matrix Q transforms vectors from the principal coordinate system to the desired one. And then the moment of inertia about A in the desired coordinate system is equal to Q times the moment of inertia matrix in the principal coordinate system times Q transpose. So if you have the, the different orientation you know, you have, you know how much your desired coordinate system varies from the principal coordinate system. You set up those matrices for rotation matrices, and um, that's easy to do. Um, then this wasn't a thing in 2D, but there is also something that was a thing in 2D, and that is... So say we're using formulas to calculate the moments of inertia in our principal coordinate system. What if our about point isn't the center of mass of the body? Um, so, you know, matrix. Um, so, uh, also, uh, we often want the matrix I sub A out um, a point that's not the body center of mass. And what would you guess you use here? Yeah, there's a parallel axis theorem that's generalized to three dimensions. Um, and the parallel axis theorem works like this. Um, So choose a coordinate system with the origin at the desired about point. And let x bar y bar and z bar be the coordinates of the center of mass in that in this coordinate system then uh, the mass moment of inertia about A 
is equal to the mass moment of inertia about the center of mass plus um, the parallel, the sort of correction matrix um, <clears throat> that looks like this m times i bar squared plus z bar squared negative m x bar y bar negative m x bar z bar it's symmetric again so negative m x bar y bar positive m times the quantity x bar squared plus uh, z bar squared negative m y bar z bar negative m x bar z bar negative m y bar z bar and m times the quantity x bar squared plus y bar squared oops yeah it's a pain but um well if there's a pattern um, so the uh <laughs> what are you doing here um so in all the um the diagonal terms the one that's missing is the element that it is. If you think of this as like px, x, x, y, x, z. Uh, and then on the off ones, it's the two that are. So if you notice that pattern, it sort of makes sense. Um, most likely, I mean, if you're going to do a problem like this by hand, it's because tons of those are going to end up being zeros. And if you're not doing if they're not going to end up being zeros, you're not doing it by hand. You're writing a computer program that does this, and that takes advantage of all the patterns and everything. And you're just filling in, or, or the file you're reading is just filling in those values, you know. So, but yeah, it's it's messy. But anyway, so now we know. Okay, so here's a status check. Wearing my Gucci loafers. Uh, not really. Okay, good. Where are my Gucci loafers? Okay, let's go back to dynamics now. So status check. Um, <laughs> status. Um, so if you know this matrix about the center of mass in the principal coordinate system now we can use that to find this matrix i sub a for any a in any coordinate system, exclamation point. Okay, that's good. Except we haven't talked about why we need this yet. So now back out to the next level up. What are what, what category was this in? This mathematical preliminary. Uh, what are what are we working towards right now? The angular momentum. Yeah. So now we can define the angular momentum capital H sub A, and this is a vector about the point A As HA is equal to this moment of inertia 
matrix about A times the angular velocity vector. Nope, that's a vector. Um, so this is a three by three matrix, and you can multiply a three by three matrix times a three by one matrix or a column vector, you get a column vector back. Um, yeah. And so, uh, now I think I gave it before, right? That our, that our new version of the rotational Newton second law is going to be this. And so, um, for rigid body problem, we'll use that in rotational Newton's second law. And it says, I don't know, I'm writing this again, but just get these together. Uh, the moment about A, so add up all the moments about A, that's going to be equal to the time derivatives of the components of the angular momentum. Plus the angular velocity of the coordinate system passed with the angular moment. Where A is either fixed an inertial coordinate system or the body center of mass. Okay, so um, let me show you the kind of thing that uh, that we need this for to calculate. Um, and this is what I said was one of.